I'm the type of artist that needs to keep evolving, keep moving, keep trying stuff, keep experimenting, just to stay interested. Yeah. And I think that if it gets to a point where it's formulaic and you're mm -hmm. just doing the same thing over and over again, and, yeah. and somebody says, oh, you know, Okamura, you know, his work, and you can imagine, oh yeah, it's exactly that. Right. Um, you know, I think that that's good for a little while, but eventually you want to you change and, and grow. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think any good artist is constantly growing. Like when I come to a studio, the first thing that keeps amazing, uh, um, keeps to amaze me is um, just looking at his palette and the difference. The palette says so much. I've yeah. never seen anything like it before. And there's so many questions I want to ask you. Um, but I want to start with why the subjects that you choose for your art. Mm -hmm. Was this from like the jump? Did you, back in the day, were you sketching butterflies or, you know, <laughs> just like sculpting clay, you know, I don't know, sumo wrestlers? Like, and then now this, like why, what, what does the subject mean to you? Um, well, I mean, I was always interested in portraiture. Okay. That's something that I always did, I think, from a very young age. Um, and then, so, you know, I, I never really lost my uh, kind of fascination and love for, like, trying to, you know, capture a human face. Um, but I guess as you progress, then it's a matter of which subjects you're choosing. Black artists paint black art. Yeah. But like you said, a person of different race and yeah. culture painting black art and beautiful, you know? Right. Beautiful black art. Yeah. That's very rare. Yeah. You know, when you're just in your studio and you're doing your work yeah. and nobody's really seeing it, you know, there was this period of uh, sort of incubation, you know, where you're just working on stuff that you think is dope. You yeah. know, like you're just trying to do the coolest paintings and in my case, the coolest portraits that you can. And I tried to paint, you know, the coolest people that I, you know, yeah. wanted to wanted to try to represent. Like I said, I think that maybe in the back of my mind it was like, yeah, these these women have been underrepresented in the, in the history of portrait painting. And, you know, let me let me try to add a new voice, yeah. you know, to the to the conversation. It's almost like it's a, it's an honor that someone thinks that you're important. It's funny because people ask about like, oh, when you, you know, like, yeah. when did you fall in love? Like, yeah. I don't think you ever, for me at least, not in my experience, never feel that way. Like, I think that sometimes, like, sometimes I feel like it's sort of like amateurs <laughs> that say, mm -hmm. I love this. I love to paint right. because the struggle is not there. You know, it's like a hobby. It's like, yeah, that's a diversion. That's uh, you know sort of a stress relief thing, but for me, when you're living it, yeah. this is your life and your career, it's, like, it's such a complicated, yeah. twisted kind of life. The reactions have been so incredible, especially with Tim's work. Yeah. We've had numerous people come in crying, wow. hugging Tim, like such impactful yeah. sort of responses that I was like, yeah. I've extended to say about seven times now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I have a cameo in, yeah. in Prime. Do it's, you? it's very hard to see, but there's a scene where they're in Magnolia Bakery, mm -hmm. and I play a baker. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna and go I, watch. Yeah, it. I had a line actually. It got cut out of the film, but, oh, I, man. but you, if you look really hard, you can see me in the window putting down a tray of cupcakes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but then they did use your artwork though for the. But film. they used the artwork, okay. and originally Sandra Bullock was cast in the role that Uma Thurman ended up taking, mm -hmm. and they were like, you know we need you to do a portrait of her for the film. And I said, well, I do not work from photographs. I got to meet with her and mm -hmm. you know, I got to work with yeah. her. You know, I don't know why I did that, but yeah. I, just, I always really liked Sandra Bullock. I had a crush and on so her. And so you got to do that. Though. Yeah, so I sat That's down with great. Sandra Bullock. She had just finished shooting uh, Miss Congeniality too. Oh, that was like the perfect time. Yeah, and I went to the photo series and said, hi, I'm Sandy. I'm like, ah, yeah. I could barely, you know, form <laughs> words. And then let alone draw her. Like that was yeah. the whole idea. I was supposed to do these, these preliminary studies yeah. and sketches. And I love so that I'm you were bold there. enough to be like, I don't do. Yeah. <laughs> so what if they said? Oh, I'll have to work with her directly. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's good. Yeah. What about the adorableness above here? Yeah. So these are <laughs> these are my uh, these are my little cousins um, who live in LA, mm -hmm. and uh, we were just this is like from 2007, I think. Mm -hmm. we, were, we were clowning around 
it was like. So they're all grown ups now. They're like, wow. Yeah, like she, like, Elise just got accepted to St. John's University as a student athlete. She's an awesome softball player. Wow. But yeah, and then the funny thing is, like, I, I think people don't know that about me, that, that all my Cali cousins, like, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, they're black or half black and half Japanese. And, yeah. And I, I you know, it's funny because I, I don't, like, bring it up when people talk to me about, like, why you pay, yeah. you know, black women or whatever. I don't say, well, my family is. Yeah. Because I don't really feel like I got to justify it by Absolutely. saying that, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, I guess people don't realize that. that So you mentioned earlier about, you know, this, there's kind of like this fear that kind of propels you forward. Yeah. It's like, well, if I don't make it, then what's the fear? Is it that you're going to literally like end up on the street or is it that you're going to end up in a nine to five where you just can't stand your life? So I know a lot of artists that I know, that is more the fear. It's, they're less afraid about sleeping on a bench than yeah. putting a tie on. Well, I, I mean both in a way, like, yeah. Like, it would just be kind of a, you know, your soul would kind of die. I <laughs> think if you're like, yeah, I'm making good money at this nine to five job, I've got a nice apartment, or whatever. But, uh, but there's also been moments where they're like, I'm gonna lose my apartment. Right? Yeah. I'm gonna be evicted right now because yeah. I can't pay the rent. Like, and that's a lot of fear and that's a lot of yeah. stress. You know? Are those the moments when you took those those other jobs that for the interim? Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's moments where I literally just would wake up every day and just, you know, pray. Like, yeah. Literally sit there for 10 minutes and pray. Yeah. <laughs> um, <you know. laughs> I know that you're working on something now, you know, a project that's coming out. Yeah. Um, how much freedom or room do you have to be as creative as you want when they're telling you, hey, we want this? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a really cool, you know, I wouldn't normally do something probably like this, I, I think, if it wasn't for my love of, of the artist, you know, that uh, it's an album cover project. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason why they approached me is because of my work. How do you want people to view you? I mean, obviously everyone has their own idea of who you are, but like, yeah. you know, as an artist, obviously there's a way that you like to present yourself. Right? Yeah. When when someone thinks about Tim Akamura, what do you want them to think about? You know, who do you want them to walk away from? You know, what are they thinking about whether it's looking at your at your paintings or meeting you? Yeah. Who do you want Tim to be to these people? I, I think that I just want them to experience uh, authenticity and, and honesty. You know, I think I've always sort of let that guide me, you know, and, and guide the work. And I think that um you can't always control that though you know people are going to look at things through a certain lens and sometimes you know somebody is just going to they're going to look at my work and they're going to say oh he's trying to do this or you know screw that guy he's, mm -hmm. you know i don't like him painting um black women or you know that's th that's always going to happen yeah. and it depends like i said it's i think that we all sort of have like these prescription glasses, mm -hmm. you know, virtual, that we look at the world through. Mm -hmm. And there's some people that wake up in the morning, they put those glasses on and they see um, an angry environment. They see a hostile place. And I know that my intentions are um, are pure, you know. Mm -hmm. from, from my standpoint, I, I know my motivations and I know that, like I said, it's come about very organically, what I do and that it's authentic. Yeah. You know, it, it really is. And, and so I, I like it when people sense that. So you know, your your, your work is there's an authenticity there, and you're you're trying to be as honest and, as you can mm -hmm. in in doing what you're doing, and and, uh, and I think that you know I I always try to infuse some kind of positivity into it. You know, that that's where I'm coming from. Yeah. You know, is this celebration of uh, of these people? You know, mm -hmm. the celebration of life in a way. And a celebration of beauty. Till next time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're good. Mm. Yay. Even though we're going to finish it. Good interviewer. Great interviewer.